It's about 43 pounds around itself, so it, it's pretty big. Normally, whenever we fire this, it recoils about 43 inches back, uh, so you'll feel the kick, definitely. We, we feel it from the seats, pilots up, up front feel it, everyone feels it. This is the 105 millimeter cannon on the AC-130J gunship, nicknamed Ghost Rider. The cannon is located here, on the left side of the plane, along with a 30 millimeter gun. Both weapons take out targets with extreme precision. Over the last 20 years in the Middle East, the U.S. military used the AC-130 to provide heavy fire against insurgents to protect U.S. forces on the ground. But now, the military says its current adversaries, in places like the Asia-Pacific region and Europe, require it to be more targeted. And the newest model of the AC-130 is meant to help it achieve this mission. Continue to let this target develop for a second. Let's get eyes on them, and if they start moving this direction, please let me know which BP is going to be the closest. Insider visited Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico, to find out how the Ghost Rider is built for precision and how training on this gunship is evolving to prepare crews for the threats of tomorrow. We're able to get places faster and stay there longer. Its engines are roughly 25% more efficient, which means we've got roughly 25% more loader time. We have the ability to stay on station for that much longer. Also, with the more fuel efficient engines, and it is roughly 20% faster. That's compared to the AC-130W. The J model became fully operational in 2017 to aid in close air support for ground troops, gather intel from above, and perform controlled bombings with precision. All right, so yeah, this is gonna be the 30 millimeter. It's our GAL-23. That's an incredible weapon, very precise. The J model was built with a precision strike package, which has two weapons, starting with the 30 millimeter gun. So it's going to be made up of a barrel, upper receiver, and the feeder assembly. And then within it, it's gonna have your flexible chutes that feeds the ammo into it. Air Force leadership has said that because of its accuracy, the 30 millimeter gun is almost like a sniper rifle. This is going to be the 105 millimeter Hauser. Normally you have two gunners that are going to be here working it. One's going to be loading it, the other one's going to be pulling the brass out. And then there's going to be where we store the ammunition for it. So the firing is also going to be like the same for the 30 millimeter. The personnel at the mission operator pilot are going to select the gun. And from there where the sensor is pointing, the gun will slave to that position. And then you just fire it with a trigger based off the hands-on throttle and stick. So this is gonna be the MOP, or referred to the Mission Operator Pallet. So in these two seats here, you're gonna have your Combat System Officer on the left seat, and then the Weapon System Officer here on the right seat. And these co are correlated with the sensors on the outside of the aircraft. So for this one, it's gonna be the sensor off the nose of the aircraft. And then for this seat, it's gonna be the sensor on the left hand side over there. So for this, this is where we control all of the munitions. A lot of the radios, we're talking to the guys on the ground, and then both the guns. What's unique about us is we've got two of, I think, the best sensors in the Department of Defense, personally, and the MX-20 and the MX-25. These two sensors are a key element in how the AC-130J crew collects accurate intelligence and confirms the location of targets before employing its weapons. Due to the sensor's classified design, our cameras were not permitted to film them when the lenses were exposed. All right, so right here on the pilot station and is also located at the co-pilot station, you're gonna have your heads up display. Um, just extra SA for the pilots, it's gonna give them a lot of their navigational tools so they can see and then maintain SA while having eyes out on the aircraft while, while flying as well. That way they don't have to look down. It kind of just helps uh, keep the crew safe. In addition to the heads up display, uh, you have the side heads up display for the pilot. Because both weapons are on the left side of the plane, pilots fly in circles when observing and firing on targets. It's going to help with the employing the munitions and it gives them better SA on the battlefield. Another update to the J model are its more efficient engines, which allow the plane to fly 25% farther and 25% longer than the earlier AC-130 models. Luckily, there are several amenities on board to provide comfort on these longer flights, 
pretty cool feature is we have a microwave in addition to a, a coffee maker as well. So kind of a nice way on the longer flights to heat up your food. Um, that way you're just not eating cold stuff all the time. So yeah, actually for myself, I was on the longest flight in ACJ history, 16 hours, uh, headed out to Japan. And it, it was nice just to heat up some warm burritos as opposed to having like a cold sandwich, something like that. So we do have a, a toilet on the aircraft um, for the longer flights. It's super nice to have. So it just comes down like that, and then there's a little curtain for privacy, and then you just flip it up, and yeah, just like a, a normal toilet. So it's definitely needed on those longer flights. Now, with us being out of the global war on terror, I mean, it's not a priority anymore. We're moving towards more current events happening in the Pacific, uh, maybe some things in Europe. If you've seen the news. Nicknamed the Angel of Death, the AC-130 has been used in past wars to provide heavy gunfire to protect troops on the ground or to clear out an area of enemy forces. But that mentality is changing. In previous conflicts, they're really simple. People would run up on the side of mountains with Soviet era machine guns. And you knew for a fact that that guy met the rules of engagement. That was a legal strike to do. According to the 2022 National Defense Strategy released by the Department of Defense, a key priority moving forward is integrated deterrence, which according to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, means having weapon systems and technologies that make adversaries think twice about engaging in conflict. That's why the J model's precision weaponry and sensors make it a crucial military asset. And why Ghost Rider pilots are now trained on knowing when to engage in conflict. There's a lot of training that's required for us to shift away from the global war on terror. We still fundamentally want to protect the friendly force, but we have to be discerning, and that's the really tough part. And so you want to train to, hey, you got your, your spider sense, your spidey senses are tingling. Let's play this out. Let's develop this scenario while not putting the friendly force at risk. Right now, we want to sh stop short of actual conflict. All right, guys, we're going to take off. We're going to go up to the Clovis area. For gunship crews to prepare for potential conflicts abroad and become skilled in precise deterrences, they perform weekly training missions at Cannon Air Force Base, which all begin with a pre-flight briefing. And I'd rather bust a timeline but be safe than rush to failure. Leading the mission today is Major Riley Feeney, an evaluator pilot. For weather out of here today, uh, it seems to be just fine for takeoff. However, we may be getting gusting winds at like 270, uh, up to 30, possibly 35 knots per the meth. Today's flight will begin with basic pilot training, but will then move to a simulated kill or capture mission, a training scenario that will take lessons learned from previous wars and force the crew to be more precise and cautious. Hi team, they'll be uh, working with TAS Force 1.6 Team USA. We're after Objective Red Dragon. Uh, it's, it's a kill capture mission. It's a, been a guy, he's a arm smuggler, uh, been working out of the town of Clovistan. As the weapons officer, Captain Rushi Gohel has been tasked with creating a mission that will train the crew on scenarios they encounter. It's all made up, but it's based around the different threats that we'll see that we're fighting in the current fight. We'll be working in building one zero, particularly he's hidden up in the shed right in the back. This is what he's look like. He's known to be uh, traveling with a small posse. The crew will be attempting to locate a fictional threat who is thought to have a weapons cache. The team must find the threat, relay that information up the chain of command, and then decide whether to neutralize him. Ready, right. Right. Let's go to war, boys. And copy, takeoff clearance, get us straightened out here. Line-up checklist has been called complete. Hey, farm, ready to go, Co? Ready. All right. Textbook, well done. Once in the air, the crew starts the training scenarios. Feels good to be in the air, doesn't it? And so we went down to Roswell to get a couple of instrument approaches. There are specific approaches with ground-based nav aids navigational aids that allow us to put the aircraft in a safe position to land down in Roswell. Point airspeed center line, bird, bird, no factor. Uh, no factor.
It was an excellent training iteration today because it was turbulent winds with gusty winds, just basically an eight on the 10 scale of difficult, which I thoroughly love, even if it's difficult for the remainder of the people on the crew. Right, yep, pulled just a little bit too much. Stable, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and walk it down. We have an additional capability in this plane, which can take us down to 100 feet. Say you got a absolutely socked in weather and the ceiling is very low, we can utilize this system to land safely and be aligned with the runway where you simply couldn't visually see the runway. You get to follow these guidelines and get yourself very low to the ground and land. Incredibly important if you got a ground party who's 300 miles away and they need you to come help them. Once the pilots finish practicing landing at Roswell, the training shifts to the back of the plane. Unfortunately, the live fire range was closed due to uh, some extreme weather that had occurred recently. However, what we did is a dry fire scenario. All players, all players, assault force is internal to objective building. The crew began searching on the ground for the location of their fictional insurgent. All right, I'm in the objective area. Uh, just getting a quick eyes on the target building. Unable to uh, pee any weapons yet. Uh, we'll continue scans. After several minutes, Gohel spotted a potential target. I have contact currently about eight packs. They are unloading weapons from two trailers uh, located 300 meters north of their position. Uh, they look like they're uh, game planning and re getting ready to move. I don't know what direction. All right, hey, and uh, from Jackal, from Devil, continue to let this target develop for a second. Let's get eyes on them, and if they start moving this direction, please let me know which BP is going to be the closest. We will hold off on breaching until we have an idea of what these packs are going to do. One of the items the crew was practicing today was following the rules of engagement before firing on a target. So the rules of engagement are, and they were really, really well defined by the kind of the tail end of what was the global war on terror. The explicit verbiage in them is, is relatively classified, but the idea is you have to meet certain criteria in order to be engaged. Able to PID two packs once he's been carrying some sort of long cylindrical object. Before Gohel fires the weapons, the aircraft commander must give consent. I mean, so we'd have consent. Let's well, go. You're clear to engage with 30 and 105, Mike. Mike. Five, four, three, two, one. Splash. Devil, we are taking cover. You guys are continue to prosecute till all packs are down. I got six not moving. Just uh, duo running south, closing on friendlies. All right, good impacts. Good impacts. Players, good all players, touchdown. Jackpot objective. The mission was a success, and a vital scenario for possible upcoming threats. We wanted to give it a little bit more of a flavor of, say, kind of the next theater that we're looking into, which is the Indo-Pacific Theater. And what we wanted to do today was kind of throw out, hey, look at this thing, should you shoot it? And, and really challenge people with, hey, well, does it meet the rules of engagement? Awesome. Hey, appreciate you guys playing today. I realized today was a lot more bumpy than you wanted it to be. The good news, we got the mission done. We're able to get some parole to back in. And honestly, I thought that was a really good training route for us today. I thought the crew did very well. They were very quick and all of their engagements did so legally. The one thing I did want to bring up though was we were very expeditious and we were about 20 meters from danger close on the engagement for that Romeo 9 Echo. We didn't do anything wrong. It was contact. Everything was within limits. We were out at like 230 meters away, but it's one of those ones too, like just as a technique, and this is my instructional fix for the crew, is anytime that you're within 25 meters, of a danger close engagement, you probably should be talking to the to the JTAC. So I thought they did a good job, and I thought Captain Boone did an exceptional job of leading the crew, which for me, the big ticket here is watching pilots, watching aircraft commanders develop into leaders. The potential of the AC-130J continues to grow. To keep up with the military capabilities of its potential adversaries, Air Force Special Operations Command has started testing a new high-energy laser weapon that could one day replace the 105mm cannon. Air Force leadership says that with this, targets could be permanently disabled without the slightest bang, whoosh, thump, explosion, or even aircraft engine hum. It's very fun to take this tool, which has just absolutely been a hammer uh, in the global war on terror and then pivoting it to uh, just a, where creativity is king and, and enabling that. See if I can find, I see Lowe's, I see Walmart. Yep. They put in a new skate park over there. 
by the uh, Green Acres. Skater die. <laughs>